Hi everyone, Dr. Sarah here and today I'm going to read you a part of my book Wildlife Wong and the Bearded Pig. Now you might remember that Wildlife Wong lives in Borneo and he studies animals in the rainforest. He spent years in the jungle trying to find sun bears and along the way he met some interesting creatures called bearded pigs. Let me tell you about those. When Wong and Cha Chen drove down a dusty, windy road. They were both excited to be back in Borneo. They came to a huge wooden welcoming sign announcing Danham Valley Field Centre. The rainforest opened up to reveal grassy lawns and a few wooden buildings. Some were places where scientists lived and others contained all the tools Wong would need for his research. Scientific laboratories a specimen drying room, and a library overflowing with more books than the library that he knew from home. The Sagama River divided the grass from the rainforest and a wobbly suspension bridge led over the water to the research forest. Beyond it, ancient trees, tall towers and observation platforms beckoned like a gateway to a magic kingdom. They settled into their wooden cabin and Wong cooked noodles while he listened to the sound of the rainforest transitioning or changing from day to night. The calls of birds decreased as they found a roost for the night and cicadas started a wave of sound which travelled through the trees. Booming frogs competed with each other. Nighttime in the rainforest certainly wasn't silent. Outside the door he could he see a bearded pig foraging or searching in the grass. It had a crazy moustache and wiry hairs under its chin, like an unkempt or messy male lion. It turned its head and Wong noticed it only had one eye. That must be Michael, the resident pig they told me about, he said to Cha Chen. Michael was a semi-habituated pig, which means he was almost tame. At least I found one pig, Wong chuckled. He threw his kitchen scraps to Michael, who snorted them up hastily. Over time, Michael met another pig called Mary. One day, Michael and Mary came to meet Wong together. Wong was cooking again when Michael strode out of the bushes like a pig on a mission. His snout twitched as he caught a whiff of dinner. But Mary seemed to hesitate on the edge of the bushes. Slowly, very slowly, she emerged with three little piglets behind her. They were the size of a sausage dog with dark brown stripes along the length of their body. The piglets stayed close to their mum as Wong called Cha Chen and his assistants to the table and served them hot steaming bowls of food. While they ate, they considered names for the new arrivals. What would you call the three little pigs? These pigs ended up being called pork, chop and bacon. From then on, the little pigs visited often. They slept patiently with their mum on the lawn outside Wong's house until the humans had eaten their dinner, because they knew theirs was coming soon. As soon as Wong stood up to clear the plates away, they got ready. Wong scraped the plates of scraps onto the ground just outside the back door. Within minutes, it was gone. It seemed the piglets didn't seem to mind being called after food, as long as they got the leftovers. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed that story. If you're interested in reading more about pork chop bacon and their parents, Mary and Michael, then I suggest this book is the one for you. You can buy it here or you can actually also buy it through your bookshop at home. Thank you so much for listening.